Should you be investing in real estate? Are we at the top of the market? Is inflation going to continue? Do we see a crash in the future? What, you know, what are, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, will we have a correction crash? I, don't, I mean, that, that's, that's the question everyone's asking. Yes, we'll, ha we'll have to have a correction at some point. I mean, as markets rise, there has to be a stabilization point. Why they haven't stopped rising right now, I, I think are, are a few reasons. Uh, the Fed printed $4 trillion worth of you know, cash. Wish um, I could. <laughs> <laughs> they, so, so a lot of people have money right now. Um, and, and then, you know, we have, I mentioned before, you know, BlackRock, we have large REITs and hedge funds that are getting capital at next to no cost and they're buying up real estate. I mean, BlackRock's in, in the, I think, negotiations right now to buy some rental company that owns 17,000 rental homes. Wow. Um, so they're trying to, to, to purchase that up. I mean, so I, mean, I don't see as long as they continue that buy up, I don't see prices um, decreasing. Now they may stabilize um, and they might still increase slightly, but I don't, I don't see them coming down for a while. Yeah. And that's the big question is, you know, I did use the term crash. I should have used correction like you did because, uh, you know, the crash, which, uh, you know, 208, everybody remember uh, 2008, everybody remembers that, but, you know, I, and I, I really don't think we're going to see a big, you know, kaboom like we <clears throat> experienced in 2008, but we are going to see some kind of correction. And that, you know, the, the, the question is, is how much of a correction are we going to see? I, I was talking with a guy on my Wednesdays with Wendy call yesterday. He is an investor out of California. And of course he's, he's looking at, at properties um, outside of California because, you know, it's ridiculous. The pricing there is absolutely ridiculous. So he's looking in the yep. Carolinas and his statement to me was, I'm looking for property that has um, a strong appreciation and it's okay for me to buy it now, even if it has a negative cash flow. And <laughs> I, I did my best, you know, I said, get, get your California thinking out of your head. <laughs> <laughs> appreciation is the cherry on top. Don't buy a house for appreciation, but so many people are thinking that thinking that that's the way you should do this. Yeah. When you, when you, you know, in my experience, when you gamble on appreciation, you're usually buying at the top of the market because you've seen the appreciation. Mm -hmm. you, you, you have a, you, you have this track record, this, this backlog of appreciation happening. You're like, Oh man, this is great. It's never going to stop. Let me go ahead and buy. And then you buy and then it stops. And now you have a negative cash flowing asset that is also under, un, underwater. Like <laughs> that's not, not what you want. So you are right. I mean, in my opinion, you are right. Like you, you always want to have positive cash flow. Um, appreciation is definitely the cherry on top. I mean, if you stay in the property long enough, you will gain appreciation. Real estate in, in America is, you know, historically appreciated. Um, so that, I, I think you're right. Uh, one thing before I get to the question that was just asked, I know everyone's talking about foreclosures mm. and, you know, are we going to see a lot of foreclosures or, or are they going to put a moratorium on it? Um, I, th I think they will continue to kick the can down. But the bigger thing is like, hopefully I don't think most homeowners are, are stupid. <laughs> you're, I, I hope not, but yeah. your, your property has just appreciated a lot. If you can't pay your mortgage, refinance, capture that equity. I think you're going to have a lot of people they already have. And as we keep moving down the line, people will continue to do so is to recap, like recapitalize with that equity to or sell it or yeah, or, or sell it. And you know, the, the issue is that now if you sell it, where do you go? Mm -hmm. But, um, but I mean, people can capture that equity, um, whether through, uh, refinance, through HELOCs, through second mortgages, what have you. Uh, there's a lot of options out there for people. I mean, just like, you know, my house in the last, gosh, in the last 18 months, I and mean, it's like, it's appreciated like over a hundred thousand dollars. And it's like, that's, that's insane. That's, that's yeah. a big bump, <clears throat> you know, and now I'm in South Carolina. So a hundred thousand dollars is a lot of money to, to us. It's not yeah. like, you know, in California, but, but yeah, it's like, 
I don't think we're going to see this. Like everyone, you know, tries to, we try to liken things back to the experiences that we've had. Right. And we try to liken this back to 2007 to 2009. It's like, no, it's, it's not going to be that we have better underwritten loans. We have the knowledge of what happened. And so now we're, you know, we're doing, you know, banks and other mortgage entities are doing things to mitigate all that, you know, to create that massive exodus of, of foreclosures. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, if, if I were a person that were going into foreclosure and I'm worried about, I'm not going to have a place to live because I'm not going to be able to afford the mortgage payment or, you know, or the a much higher rent payment because mortgage is going to be a lot lower than rent. I would do my best to find an investor that would be willing to buy my property and lease it back to me at a discounted rate for at least the next 12 months, giving me time to get my stuff together so that I could find a better place to live. And yep. as an investor, I'd take that deal all day long. Yep. If, if the price was right, I'd oh, take yeah, that you're right. deal all day long. Mm -hmm. there's, there's so many different ways uh, around that.